All right, guys, we're at the shop. Uh, someone requested a video of my tog rigs, so I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of what I tie. I always use Seaguar Blue Label. Uh, lately, they've had Green Label at the shop. It's a really good leader, uh, very abrasive resistant. Uh, 40 pounds, this is 20 pounds, just happens to be what I have. I always use a minimum of 40. So what I do is I take about four feet of leader material and I make a loop about three inches like that. I will pinch it here and wrap it around the tag end right there twice over and around twice. Pinching the the tag and where I wrapped it around twice. I go through this loop that I made these two loops and I get a figure eight. This is the knot I always tie. I don't do dropper loops. I've had them pop. See that's 20 pound test and it broke. That's why he's 40. So, do that again. All right, usually it's uh, about that big. I'll clip my tag end to about 3 16 of an inch. All right, I put my sinker on this loop. Now, what I've read in my experience is <clears throat> the lower you have your hook loop, the more natural it is for the bigger tog. When it's on the bottom, it'll have that crab closer to the bottom. You don't want it super close to the sinker, but you do want it low. You don't want it six inches up. I usually go around a couple inches up from my knot at most. <clears throat> I'll do another loop. This one bigger, this one about four inches. Same knot, pinch over, twist around twice. Pull it through, if we can get it. There it is, cinch it down. And then I have that loop. And that ties up either to my braid on my spinning rod. If I'm, if I'm gonna use my spinning rod, I'll do like an FG knot or a double uni. Uh, so then I'll take my hook, I'll either do a single hook, these are my, uh, swivel hook, but they, they'll work for the example. I just slip it through, I go over the hook once, twist, and back over, and then pull it down, and that cinches onto the, the hook. So... That'll just hang back from the sinker. Crab will usually, on low current, the crab will drop to the bottom just past the sinker. And it looks very natural. And Tog will pick it right up. Just kind of like a jig too in low current. High current, it's gonna be up here. It's gonna be moving around. Right there though, in the, in the strike zone. Those Tog are very close to the bottom. You don't want it up off the bottom really high. They'll still come up and get it, but the bigger Tog, I believe, are really lazy. And they're just right there, and they'll swallow it right up. So for the stinger hook, another example, I will take the one hook, put it through, slide it up, and take a second hook. This I find I've caught much bigger tog. Um, even, you know, keeper size, it's a better hookup ratio. Same thing around the hook, twist, back over, and pull. I didn't get that. I didn't get the twist on that. Twist, and then back over. There we go. And that cinches down pretty good. So <clears throat> when I'm hooking my crab up, I'll slide this. I'll usually put the first hook in, because the slider hook, I can work down the loop. I'll put the first hook in through like the claw socket, and I'll take this second hook in and put it through the back leg socket, usually out the abdomen. So I'll end up, when I'm all said and done, with the two hooks like that in the crab. So when the tog comes over, if he bites the side, you got one hook and yanks that crab right off, you know, that's, a lot of times that's what happens and, and, you, and you'll miss hooking up with a good fish. If you've got two, 
He's, he'll come either side, potentially get hooked, or hit both. A big one will go right over both, and that's why I really like this setup. Uh, I've been using it for the last month this season and pulling up big, big fish. Uh, we just pulled up a 10 and a half pounder yesterday. My buddy pulled up his first uh, double digit, and I had my first double digit uh, the week before. Um, so this is what we do. This is what I use. Uh, you know, it's all preference. And uh, the big thing is making sure that it's the uh, 40 pound, because this 20 pound, it will break. Single hook, you don't even do that. That's why they come off. No, if you got a single hook, pull the two front claws off more, go through the holes and out. You, you'll stay on much better, a whole crab that way. Oh, sounds pretty good. See, the sun's getting overhead. I think, yeah, it wakes them up. Fish sleep when it's dark. It took a while for the bite to turn on once the sun came is. up. Oh, yeah. Bring him to me, bring him to me. Oh, nice one, dude. That's a That's a beast. That's over eight. Mark got one. <laughs> oh, he jumped out? Yeah, he swam right out. I got it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, good one. Swirling. Oh yeah. Nice one. That's a keeper. Okay, calm down. Okay. Measure you just to be sure, but I'm almost positive. Yep, keeps. Oh, yeah, okay. You want to hold? You're going to be able to net him? You good? Bring your rod to the right. Swing your rod to the right. Swing it to the right. Your rod. There you go. I don't see any color. Whoa, we saw the boat, bro. He's definitely big. I still don't see any color. There he is. That's 10. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Nice! Open your eyes. Can you see it? It's saying it's only eight. No way. No way. No way. No. You can spin the thing. Spin it. There you go. Dude, it's 10 pounds, bro. Yeah, it's it's over 10, it's breaking 10. Nice. Hey.